Hi, this is Sean Smith from The Blackout, and please listen to my final interview on Radio Cardiff with a lovely Morgan. Mmm, Morgan. Hey, I'm Morgan Richards from Radio Cardiff, 98.7 FM. I'm delighted but extremely saddened to say that I'm backstage at the Leisure Centre here in Merthyr Tidville, and I'm rejoined by a band making their last appearance on the show for their farewell hometown gig tonight after 13 years together. It's of course those Welsh hard-slamming, riot, party-starving children of the night saying their last goodbye is the wonderful Mr. Sean Smith of the Blackout. Oh, that was lovely. Cheers. I like the way you got all the song titles uh, in there somehow. But yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. No worries. Always a pleasure. So how's things? Yeah, good. Um, splitting up, obviously. Mm. Um, yeah, apart from that, excellent. The tour has been incredible. People have been coming out and giving it their all and running about. And in London, there was circle pits started before we even went on. That's probably because they were enjoying Bullock and Valden on the stereo before us. But uh, yeah, it's been it's been amazing. People have been going mental. Giant circle pits, giant walls of death, some pants being thrown on stage. Girls' pants, not boys, thank God. I'm not opposed to boys' pants. If they're in my size as well, I could do with some more. Because I don't know where my pants come from. I think my mother buys them all. I'll check my pants drawn, and it'll be full. And I don't. I genuinely don't know where my pants come from. So I guess it must be my old girl sorting them out. Nice of her. <laughs> Besides of that, cheers for taking time out for one of the last interviews with the band. No, like I said earlier, thank you very much for that video um, that you made with the other bands uh, saying goodbye to us. It was touching. Absolutely. So, Sean, where do I start, really? To say the last 13 years have been phenomenal for the Blackout would be an understatement. When you started in 2003, you never thought you'd get the opportunity to play with all your favourite bands, nonetheless release four studio albums, a bunch of EPs, and just some all-around amazing things in that time. But now, sadly, after having announced in your corner a day, recently just set off your farewell tour with the final ever show tonight in your hometown, Merthyr. I'm sure it must be very odd and feeling very surreal to think that this is your last night bowing out of something you've been doing for over the last decade. Yeah, it's really strange. It's, um, apart from Merthyr Rock, which I suppose is a pretty big show, it's like there's not really many other venues to play around here. It's like, prior to this, if we didn't do this, which is like a thousand plus sellout show, um, we were going to do the Red House, which is like 200 capacity or whatever. So um, yeah, we decided to go for this one and uh, it sold out or whatever and it, it blows our mind because I remember coming here and seeing old British wrestling year, years and years ago and I was just like, this this place is insane. It's like, it's a new building now, but it's like where we're, where we're sitting now is, is where the old Rudy car was. And, you know, I saw Big Daddy and Giant Ace Stacks and all these massive wrestlers um, wrestle, yeah. And now the band's headlining and it's, yeah, it's mind blowing. It's awesome. I still can't get over the things we've done anyway. It's like, it's all happened and all of it's been surreal, let alone, you know, this moment now. It's like when I think back, you know, going to Japan and going to Australia and hanging out with some of my favorite bands and I've met everybody. I've met all my musical heroes and it turns out they're all lovely. So if you if people tell you not to meet your heroes because they might be dicks to you, that's wrong in my case. So uh, unless your hero is Jeremy Kyle or Jeremy Clarkson, um, you might be all right. And I'm sure it must have been a real tough decision to actually call it a day because before you announced it, you recently had some mind-blowing reception from your fan-funded Wolves EP last year. It was very hard financially to continue with the band, especially with most of the guys now having families and mortgages. And it's really sad to see because all you guys are the best of friends and the passion you show for everything is unbelievable. Yeah, well, it's, um, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, it's not like we're going out to hate each other like a lot of bands do. Like, I love these boys dearly and, uh, well, they probably do hate me, but they don't tell me, which is very, very kind of them because they've had plenty Bob's looking at me now like he does hate me while eating a sandwich um yeah so it's yeah it's amazing that we've had this journey for so long and and none of us don't think we've ever had a fist fight between us really have we oh some guy a guy doing monitors for us today once pulled Gavin out of a bunk and used Gavin as a baseball bat against me literally pulled Gavin was sleeping in his bunk and he grabbed Gavin by the legs and pulled him out and swung him and hit me with him that's quite impressive yeah it's, it is he's a very he's a very powerful man but um apart from that we've never come to blows or anything or you know ever had any fights or strangled each other no it's weird it's probably gonna happen tonight now i've said that now because we got flames and stuff in for tonight as well so there's a good chance if a fight breaks out because they got an i've noticed they've got handles on the side the flamethrowers so i think there's a good chance i could spray the band yeah. So is it? Yeah, there's a good chance someone might die. So oh, I might be dead by the time this goes out. Still put it out though. Ooh, this is Sean. I'm dead. Ooh. Oh, please use that if I die, please your final wishes yeah cheers thanks <laughs> and uh, with this farewell tour now i have to say that i've been to a couple of the dates and obviously countless shows in the past but this tour does really seem to have been something special with you and your fans giving it all with a dream set list uh, they are going to be the best shows the band have ever done 
Yeah, I yeah, I think so. I think um, like I said, I think it's people just realizing that if we're the, one of their favorite bands or whatever, like you know, they're never gonna get to see us again. And I think I think that's the problem with the music industry now, especially in the UK, is fans of bands don't realize how lucky they are because they constantly think, oh, I'll miss this too. Uh, they'll do another one and stuff. But in this climate at the moment, how many, I don't know how many bands can afford to live on and and you know carry on because it's it's really tough. People people think you know you're selling a thousand tickets or whatever, you must be rich. But it's not. After that gets filtered through promotion promoters and agents and everybody else you know it's it's pittance really i yeah. guess but um yeah but yeah well it's a testament we've lasted so long and we also love each other so okay well brilliant it's great to see that you guys are going out with a massive bang as well <laughs> it might actually be a bang now <laughs> if, the, if the flames kick off yeah. And uh, I have to talk to you about the tour name, because of course the final farewell tour, this is it, is it? Really, only you guys could come up with a name yeah, like yeah. that. I think it was Gareth Lawrence, our drummer, came up with the, uh, the idea. Because how Welsh is it? Well, first of all, we all love Michael Jackson, right? Um, he didn't love any of us, psychologically or physically. Um, but yeah, we all love him, so Snows came up with, Oh, we should do like a this is it. And then he was like, we could make it super Welsh with this is it, is it? And then we, it, it stuck, and it's genius. It's absolutely genius. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. And uh, one thing I wanted to mention too, I've said about the last release in the Wolves EP getting some mind-blowing response with the amount of people backing it on Kickstarter. Yeah. But with those collection of songs, it really showed returning to some of those earlier elements, to some of the heavier stuff, producing raw, in-your-face material, and really something die-hard fans really love. Looking back at that now, you must be really pleased to bow out with that EP as your last release. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. We kind of knew, like, just after we recorded it, and, and we were rehearsing for the tour. That's when it kind of came up that, you know, we couldn't afford to do it anymore. People want to go and get jobs and families and mortgages, like you said. So it, it kind of encapsulates everything we are feeling now and at the time when we recorded it. And like, I guess there's subtle hints in there in the song. There's like, um, in, it's in Liars, I think. Yeah, the middle eight, because uh, it feels like it's almost over. We're fading away. It's kind of true to form, I guess, and uh, that's where I guess this was kind of happened. So yeah, it's um yeah, we're really really happy with the CD, and I know for me it's it's some of the best stuff we've done. So and it was angry, and yeah, that's the way, yeah. that's the way it's meant to be. And obviously with that as well, just recently you guys put up another Kickstarter campaign for live recording of tonight's show as a DVD, yeah. and you guys got the moment you asked for straight away in yeah. just a couple of hours. Well, my f my phone was broken um, when we were going to announce that we were doing a Kickstarter, so I didn't have a phone for two days, so I didn't see any tweets about it, I didn't see Facebook, because I've got a laptop or whatever, so I didn't even know it had gone up. I thought, because I'm such a pessimist, I thought, oh boys, we can put the DVD up, but I, you know, I don't think anyone's going to even bother. And we made the 11 and a half grand in an hour and a half, two hours. Yeah, that blew my mind, and now it's on something super, super yeah. ridiculous. Um, it's on like £34,000 now, so um, yeah, the DVD is going to look fantastic. But that's like, like we said, like as fantastic as the response is to that and like Wolves, however much money was raised for Wolves, you know, went straight to the recording and that. But if you look at it, it was only like 1,200 people backed it or whatever. And when you think about it, like tonight we're playing to that many people. So for us to carry on as a band, you know, we couldn't do like a Kickstarter thing every tour or whatever, because it's not the people who were coming to the tour that were Kickstarting, do you know what I mean? Like there's, there's only so many backers who've pledged loads more money than you know you'd expect people to so um yeah the response has been incredible and i thank every single person that's put in put money in it's it's unbelievable and this dvd is going to be awesome hopefully because we've sent them like over 100 hours of tapes that we've had since since we started in 2003 there's going to be some me with my fluctuating weight and fringe size with stupid colors on and off in my hair bob's gonna have had it at one point in the dvd <laughs> in the dvd people will get to see bob with it which is strange. He looks like an evil wizard. And Gavin had long hair at one point, but I don't think that's going to make it. There's going to be videos of Gavin with a skinhead, and he looks like a thug. So, um, yeah, it's going to be really interesting. And I'm Sean, just very quickly before you go, another thing I wanted to mention to you, and something we've talked about in previous interviews in the past, is of course your unreleased cover of Lap Dance by NERD. Right. Now that you guys are breaking up, we can still get sued. You can? I think so, yeah. Even if it surprisingly got leaked on the internet. Um, I've heard that people already have it somehow. So I can't say for a fact who has it or where it's come from, but I, I do think it's out there somewhere. But yeah, I know Pharrell listens to Radio Cardiff all the time. So Pharrell, I know you're apparently happy, but you've lost a little bit of money to Marvin Gaye's family. But come on, let us put it out because it's awesome. It's unbelievable. Have you heard it? I'll get you a copy. I didn't say that, Pharrell. I will not get him a copy. Wink! Can't see this because on the radio, but I'm winking at you, Morg.
Well, uh, Sean, that's about it. This uh, is it, is it? This is it, is it? <laughs> this is it, is it? It is. <laughs> uh, I just want to say a massive thank you for taking time out on this farewell show now to have Always. another catch up with me. And of course, thank you for all the opportunities you've given me in the past for interviews and, and everything. Yes. And of course, Beth. Stop. And I'll send Andrea to reception, please. Andrea to reception. Thank you. Andrea! Andrea to reception, please. That was such a lovely <laughs> moment. We were having a moment then. I'm being really nice, and then Rita Carl Leisure Centre in Merthyr Tidville had to go and spoil it. Unbelievable. Keep that in. Please yeah. keep that in. No, oh, it means the world It means the world to us that you're interested and you've supported us, so thank you very much. Yeah. Again, thanks for having me, Sean. Thank you. Please never die.